So the number one mistake that I see painting contractors make in regards to their numbers is underpricing. So when, when a new painting contractor comes to me and uh, I'm looking at their financials, most of the time it's their profitability is off because they're just not charging enough. And so kind of a simple heuristic that I give to folks, especially if they're just starting out, is that in order to uh, to be profitable, you, you generally want to charge double of what it costs you to do the job. Mm -hmm. So if you add up your, your direct labor costs, so your, your painter costs, uh, how much you're paying your labor, plus your, your direct material costs, like the paint and sundries, you add those two costs together, just the, the raw costs, and then double it, 100% markup, that's going to uh, give you a target of 50% gross profit for, for that job. And so, you know, the bud that's the budgeted amount. Maybe your actuals come in a little bit under that, uh, but you're at least starting out with a, you know, a 50% gross profit target. Hi, Daniel, and welcome to our podcast today. It's so exciting to have you with us. I really appreciate the invite. I'm glad to be here. Uh, we are so glad. And, you know, just for our Estimate Rocket community, we have known Daniel and his wife, Melissa, for so many years. They are outstanding people, quality people. And, you know, it isn't often when you get to deal with another company that's also owned by another couple. So we know what you and your wife go through. And um, it's just a pleasure to have you here today. So welcome to our studios. Um, so tell us what is new at bookkeeping for painters. How's everything going in your business? And you know, what what are the latest things that's going on there? It's it's going great. Uh, we're working with a, a little over 160 painting businesses across the US and Canada. Mm -hmm. And we're helping folks, you know, know their numbers and what they mean, save big in tax and streamline and automate their their record keeping system. Oh God, you're you're speaking to our heart and soul here at Estimate Rocket because I don't know if you know this, Daniel, but Tom and I actually met in college and we were both finance majors. So at Estimate Rocket, we really, and I, I usually don't want to make a commercial, but at Estimate Rocket, everything focuses on your numbers. And I'm sure you have some of our customers that work with you and they give you outstanding reports out of Estimate Rocket because, you know, that's one of the advantages of having technology. And when you're streamlining your business through one platform, the numbers are with, you know, at their fingertips. And we love making sure that our, our service contractors are making a profit. Now, do you guys do tax preparation as well for service contractors? Yes, we do tax prep and tax planning. Okay. So a lot of folks are under the impression that taxes are just something that happens to them every April, <laughs> but uh, they don't. some folks don't realize you can actually in, uh, impact how much you pay in tax through, through proactive tax planning done throughout the year. Instead right. of just waiting for it to happen, you can actually save a lot of money. Actually, I just talked to a painting contractor yesterday and he is doing about uh he, he had about a hundred thousand in net profit and it, which is great you know that's great news but the bad news was he was still being taxed on as a sole proprietor uh, he had just started his business and started running it didn't really pay attention to you know forming an llc and electing an s corp status and it, you know, he was just overpaying. Uh, I think we calculated, you know, he was overpaying at least $10,000 in taxes um, by not electing that S corp status. So, you know, just a little filing a, a few pieces of paperwork with the IRS um, can, can save you tens of thousands of dollars. Right. Right. And who wants to pay more taxes than they're already supposed to be paying. Right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's not fun. I mean, you know, yeah. definitely want to stay compliant with the IRS. They, they'll get their money, but there's there's a uh, you know a lot of ways to to get around having to pay more than your fair share. Right. Exactly. Yeah, and a hundred thousand dollars in profit doesn't always mean you got a hundred thousand dollars in the bank. 
at any given time. So that can be, you know, that can be a challenge if they haven't done the tax planning appropriately and they get whacked with that, you know, that big tax payment at the end of the year, that can really be, uh, you know, obviously if they're not expecting it, that can put a crimp in their future business. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. A hundred thousand dollars in profit. You might've used that throughout the year. If you're not proactively looking at it, you think, oh, this is something I earned and I can go ahead and spend it as needed and then don't realize, oh, I should have been putting aside some money for for tax, uh, yeah. you know, paying those estimated taxes or at least setting aside money for taxes, um, yeah. which, you know, there, like I said, there's plenty of ways to get around paying taxes or as much as, you know, uh, you might want, but you still likely going to owe at least some you know amount of tax if you're mm. if you're hitting some level of success in your business right. so definitely have to pay pay attention to it if you're making yeah. money you have to pay taxes and i know yeah you know who wants to pay taxes but you have to do it and and it just means you're you're successful so you have to look at it so that way we had an attorney years ago when we first started out in business way way back when and it said, if you're not paying any taxes, you're not making any money. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Important. Yeah. It's going to, if you're any level of success, you know, you're going to hit uh, taxes are going to be your biggest expense. Right. Mm -hmm. And, and I know you're in an industry where a lot of our service contractors, they get nervous. They get, they sort of freeze when they talk about knowing your numbers and paying taxes and knowing pre pre planning for paying taxes. But if you can just take a deep breath and realize that that you're working so hard to make money, you want to be successful. And at the end of the day, you want to defend what you're making. And part of what you do is give a service to people so that they can plan accordingly and defend every single penny that they're making so that they're not paying too much in taxes. Hmm. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And, you know, folks that come to us, they, they're either looking to, to defend that money and some are just looking to actually have something to defend, which goes into the knowing your numbers and what they mean part. Um, you know, because a lot of folks will, will come to us and they'll, they'll, most of the time it's like a gross profit issue. If, if they're not, if they don't have any money to defend from taxes, it's usually, they're not their gross profit is suffering and so knowing that is is really key making sure your pricing is is squared away that you're you know estimating with mm -hmm. you know, your software using production rates uh mm -hmm. so that they can have a you right. know a profitable job to work off of and then making sure their crews are working efficiently so that that they're getting it you know uh a 50 percent gross profit or better mm -hmm. right so we're having Interesting them job you... oh sorry so we're having them job cost and look at profitability in real time and they can look at that daily and that does mm -hmm. change the whole it's a it might be a pain in the neck for some people that we make them we 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 don't make them we encar highly encourage them to use that step but the ones that are job costing and watching their profitability in real time in every single job they're the ones that are making so much money because they're not waiting till the job is halfway through or all the way done. Two weeks later, they close out that job. They thought they were making a huge amount of money. And then they say, Kathy, I couldn't even take a paycheck out of what we closed that job with for profits. Nothing was left for me at the end of the day, which is the owner. So it is so important to know your numbers. Mm-hmm. And there was an interesting example at a uh, presentation I did recently with a, we had done up a relatively simple spreadsheet for people to get a easily be able to see what the impact would be of changing like five or six variables. I add people, I go from one person to six people. I change my labor rate. I change my labor price from 55 to 65 or 55 to 60 um, my, my labor cost goes up or down, you know, average labor cost goes up and down, uh, how many weeks of vacation. So those are basically the variables and it instantly tells you what your, you know, if you bill all the hours that are mm -hmm. available to be worked and tells you what your, what your, um, what your maximum gross profit would be and, you know, maximum mm -hmm. revenue and then maximum gross profit based on some material calculations as well. And one guy came up to me after the presentation and said, 
well, I, you know, thank you. That was really great. He said, I realized by looking at your, by looking at the spreadsheet that I, I actually have an overhead problem. Oh, <laughs> he no. said, I'm doing all the right things gross profit wise, but I got mm-hmm. way too much overhead here, which wow. is, uh, you know, the other thing that, like you said, but if they don't catch it at the gross profit, you know, they don't have a shot at all right. of making it. At least if they get into the gross, if they understand that they're making a reasonable gross profit, you know, they have a shot at covering the overhead. Mm-hmm. So yeah, awareness, of, I guess, is the key. Yeah. Most of the time, just gross profit. I mean, occasionally we'll come across like someone has an overhead issue. Usually it's the, the smaller ones, like they, mm-hmm. it's an overhead issue slash they just need more revenue, you know, like they're right. Their gross profit might be dialed in, but they're just they just need to get some more revenue in to cover their their overhead right. costs. Okay, occasionally you'll come into sure. contact with someone who's just you, you just need to dial back the spending and, and just kind of you know that that's where coming um right. doing a budget each year and making sure you're comparing what you budgeted versus sure. what's actually happening. It's a called a budgeted versus actual report in uh, QuickBooks Online. Mm-hmm. You can plug your budget into QuickBooks Online. You know maybe around this time frame of the year, folks are doing that. And then throughout the year, you can kind of see, um, are you overpaying on your, you know, so- your overhead software costs or your, mm-hmm. uh, you know, your insurance costs, your bookkeeping and accounting costs, your automobile costs, those kind of overhead things mm-hmm. Sure, just to keep an eye on it. Yep. Yeah. That's key. That's key. Um, I guess wh- one of the other questions is what do you, where do you see the, um, you know, the most, the, the thing that happened that, that your customers do most often that gets them in trouble. So from a knowing your numbers perspective, I think it comes down to pricing mm-hmm. is the, is, is the, like probably the number one thing that affects overall profitability. So they just, mm-hmm. you know, the, the way I explain it's especially the folks starting out is just basically you want to charge double of what it costs you to, to do the job. So you want right. to, you know, whatever your labor is and whatever it costs for materials, add that up and then double it so that double. you have a hundred percent markup. And that's going to allow you to get a, uh, at least be on target to hit a 50% profit. Now things might not sure. happen exactly as you planned it. And you might go under that. Um, but at least you know, you, you priced and hopefully you're using production rates. Uh, you know, right. you're actually measuring things out and, and calculating that effectively. Um, but that's going to get you at least in the ballpark of where you mm-hmm. want to be. Mm-hmm. Sure. And, uh, so that's, that's probably like the biggest number one mistake for, um, the financial side of things. And then for like the tax side of things, I guess the, the biggest mistake is, is kind of bearing, their heads in the sands when it comes to taxes mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. where they just kind of ignore and you know the irs is definitely not somebody to, to ignore, ignore. They'll, they'll make themselves know <laughs> they'll make themselves known <laughs> they have an army that will just march up to your door and knock it down so you have to it, you know these are little things and and i'm sure you'd say too that um because what I think our job is, is to make people more comfortable with the, with the intention of putting numbers as a priority, right? Because if you're not making money the way you should be on every job, you might as well just close the doors. You know, it isn't, it isn't worth your time and your effort and the stress that it, that it puts on you being a business owner. So as uncomfortable as numbers are and as as much as you would like them to go away and just be awesome all the time it's not being realistic if you've raised your hand and chosen to be a business owner and Mm -hmm. so we have to pay attention to it and I think between you guys and what we do for our customers you know, we're all setting them up for success. We're trying to do it every single day in everything they do so that by the time they get to you, their numbers are awesome. They're off the charts. They're the highest in the United States and Canada. You know, they're doing record numbers and record profitability um, just in their day-to-day activities, which is certainly what we want for all of our customers. 
Yeah. I was talking. And if they're not, if they're not, at least we let you know soon enough. That yeah. You can do help them do something about it. Yeah. Yeah. I was talking to a painting contractor uh, last year and he was, uh, he, he, we jumped on a call and he was really flustered. Like he was doing about a million dollars in revenue and he needed a, um, he was doing the sales and the production management. He had crews on the job site. I think he was using the subcontractor model and he was kind of burning uh, the candle at both ends. And he was just, you know, saying like he was exhausted. He was working 80 hours a week. He want, but he wanted to bring on a production manager, but he didn't know if he was profitable because he didn't have that uh, clarity on what his numbers were. Yeah. Uh, he didn't know if right. he could afford it. Um, you know, he had, uh, you know, crews working, he wasn't sure what his gross profit was on, on the job. He was thinking that it was 40% or lower and he just didn't have a good, you know, clarity on what was going on in his business. And if he, and he wanted to grow, but again, he, he, he couldn't do everything right. He, right. You know, no matter right. how much we try to be the this, this superhero in our businesses, you know, it just, at a certain point it breaks. So, uh, and, uh, you know, I, I kind of stopped at, at a certain point and said, you know, the feeling that you feel right now, like where you don't know what to do, don't know mm. how to go move forward is basically you don't have, you, you don't understand your, your finance component in your business right now. Mm -hmm. uh, and so that's, that's what's causing all this, this stress and, um, an ability right. to take action. Right. Right. Yeah. So, so, so key. So let me ask you this, Daniel, um, because you know, you've got a lot of people in the Estimate Rocket community listening to this podcast. And is there anything we can do better to cue you up for when they get to you? Is there anything in our processes that on a day-to-day -day level that when someone new, say, comes to you, what would you like them to have in hand and be prepared so that you can have a really productive session with them to see if, you know, it's a good fit for you guys? Basically, the folks that we work best with are, are folks who want to grow. They want to use a cloud-based system software, you know, that estimate rock equipment's online, um, you know, pro tip for performance pay, you know, they, they kind of want to use a cloud-based system to kind of streamline their, 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 uh, their, their processes mm -hmm. and they want to grow to the next level. So really it's just, um, a willingness to, to be open-minded, to kind of streamline those processes so that they're saving time. And then, uh, you know, since we've looked at hundreds of financial statements and, we have, we do internal benchmarking. So we know what their numbers should be with the top 10% hit in terms of gross profit, discretionary earnings uh, mm -hmm. at different stages in the business. Uh, just be open-minded to receiving, to, you know, to receiving some um, informed, you know, feedback on, mm -hmm. on how they're doing mm -hmm. and then how, how could they improve? And, uh, and that's really, that's all I, I would really ask is, is that they'd have an open mind yeah. to, to learn for, from what we've learned working with painting businesses since 2016. Right. Mm. Right. I know it's been a long time, right? We've known yeah. you since then. Yeah. At what point in their, uh, in their journey, uh, and, and I, I, I have an answer to this too, which I have a feeling yours will be <laughs> similar, but um, what, when should a contractor start thinking about bookkeeping service in their journey? Yeah. So I would say you're going to need records pretty much when you, when you start out the gate in some form, um, right. you know, and you can keep it simple in the beginning, you know, it doesn't have to be fancy as a sole proprietor kind of depends on what your goals are. Like if you're planning to scale, you know, to a million dollars in your first year, mm -hmm. you might need <laughs> more accounting support than someone who just, Hey, I'm, I'm, I'm going to be the owner operator. And, and mm -hmm. produce work during the summer when it's, you know, there's a lot of exteriors and I might do a hundred thousand dollars or something like that. You know, uh, either case, either scenario, if you're, you know, going to hit a million dollars right out the gate or a hundred thousand dollars, or maybe even smaller than that, you're going to need some form of, 
of uh, record keeping, mm-hmm. just mm-hmm. at least at a at a bottom line for compliance purposes, because the IRS requires that you have, you know, some sort of records uh, sure. so that you can file your tax return. Uh, so that's the the base level, is just compliance. Now, once you kind of hit about um, fifty thousand dollars in profit, fifty six. Fifty or sixty thousand dollars in bottom line profit. Mm-hmm. Um, and in most cases, it makes sense for people to elect an S corp status ta- for taxation mm-hmm. purposes, and and that, be, which is which will save money. The reason why you want to elect S corp status is it, it will save you in unemployment taxes. I, I gave that example earlier on how it saved that uh, that could it was going to save that um, painting contractor about. Ten thousand plus dollars by switching to being taxed as an S corp. Mm-hmm. Now that's the wow. benefit, but the kind of the drawback is that the IRS requires S corporations or entities taxed as S corporations to have a higher standard for their bookkeeping records. So mm-hmm. not only do they need to have like basic bookkeeping records, but they need to have um, a balance sheet as well because that's going to be reported on on their right. um, S corp tax return. So. Uh, you, the kind of the compliance kind of increases, you know, when you be, are being taxed as an S corp. Sure. So, you know, you have your compliance piece, you know, to, to comply with IRS requirements, but then there's the actual managerial accounting piece where you mm-hmm. just, you know, it, it kind of going back to what Kathy said, you know, knowing your numbers and staying on top of them, knowing what your gross profit is on each job mm-hmm. as you move through the year, knowing what your bottom line is mm-hmm. through, through the year, that's going to give you the information that you need to to make decisions so you can steer your company in the right direction. Mm. Sure. Yeah. And I know some of our top customers, when they finish a job, they sit, the management, the leadership team sits and does uh, an analysis over everything. They do a deep dive yeah. and they say, okay, you know, we only met this percentage on the profit margin and next time we want this to be better. So how can we all make some changes in our process, daily processes to make that happen? So it's very interesting. And I think, you know, we don't want our customers, any of our customers burying their head in the sand because it doesn't, at the end of the day, that doesn't change anything. In fact, it will even Mm -hmm. make things worse. Mm Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. So Daniel, well, I know that you're going to be, you're going to be at the PCA Expo, this absolutely. Year, right? We will be there as well. So we can stop awesome. and talk to one another. That would be great to see you in person, but um, tell our, our followers where they can look you up and talk to you. Absolutely. You can go to bookkeepingforpainters.com and you can schedule a consult um, or you can follow us on uh Facebook or Instagram, LinkedIn. Uh, we also have a, a podcast as well called the, the Profitable Painter Podcast, yeah. which Tom, Tom was on uh, recently. <laughs> that was great. So, yeah. Uh, it's always important to be a profitable painter, right? Yes. <laughs> I mean, there's no other there's no other way to stay in business. Well, it's been an absolute pleasure having you on. I know your time is so valuable and we truly appreciate you having you as a guest on our podcast so from the estimate rocket community you know we really want to say a big thank you and appreciation for your time thank you i really appreciate the invite glad to be here